Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about a solution that I'm testing for carrying cargo behind the car. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and if you're familiar with my videos then you may be aware of a pros and cons video that I made about hitch mounted carriers and rooftop cargo boxes and trailers. Anyway, I still stand behind all of the pros and cons for each transport type. Check out those videos. I'll link them in the video description below. Or if you have time, you can watch the full length video that covers all of those items together. I'll link it right here. So why the new experiment? Well, we mounted a rooftop cargo box for last year's 7,400 mile trip to California and back. The box served us very well. If it wasn't for the fact that we were towing a trailer, I'd feel compelled to mention the extra noise and lower fuel economy that often accompanies rooftop cargo boxes. But the trailer took care of both of those issues on its own. However, the paint on my roof developed stains from water deposits that had collected around the roof rack's mounting pads since the rack had been on the car for so long. In the past, I hadn't left the rack mounted for more than a few days. This time, though, I found out when paint damage actually happens. I tried to clean and polish away the stains, but I wasn't very successful, so I decided I'd get better results from using a pro. I'll share that outcome in another video. One of the main drawbacks to using a hitch-mounted cargo carrier with this car, a Volkswagen Golf-bodied GTI, is that the cargo immediately obscures the license plate, and that's certain to draw unwanted attention and involve me in unwanted conversations. I was hesitant to relocate the license plate for short-term needs, but I decided I could come up with a plan that would make it fast and convenient and more desirable than the risk of more paint damage. I already had a cargo tray, a discontinued product that served me well over the years. You may have seen it in my previous video, but I've come to appreciate using hitch products that feature a hollow shank. Hollow shanks allow me to use anti-rattle devices that don't clamp to the hitch opening. Instead, they use a half-inch bolt to squeeze the shank against the inside of the hitch. I decided to purchase a new cargo tray, Kurt Model 18110. It's a bolt-together 48 by 20 inch steel tray with a 300 pound capacity and a hollow shank. Obviously, my hitch is limited to 175 pounds, but it's good to know that this design can support more. Interestingly enough, this carrier is 15 pounds lighter than my solid shank carrier. I still have the cargo bag that I used before and featured in my previous video, but as I mentioned earlier, it obscures the license plate on the car. So my plan was to bolt down a 46 inch wide truck box and then install taillights and a license plate mount. I chose an aluminum box that's made by DZ model number DZ5546TSCTB. It was on sale at Tractor Supply Company. It's 46 and a half inches wide, 19 and a half inches deep, and 16 inches tall all on the outside, and it holds eight cubic feet. It's almost a perfect fit to the Kurt tray. I got to drilling holes and adding quarter inch threaded receptacles for easy mounting. Everything is fastened from the bottom to hold it to the tray. Next, I bought some flush mount trailer lights and a lighted license plate bracket from eTrailer.com as well as a basic trailer lighting harness. The work was easy to do in a few hours, including some drilling and glue work. The extra lighting isn't necessary since as you can see, the car's lighting is completely visible, but I figured, eh, why not? I'm already mounting the license plate. I had to put a light here to make it legal. So I went ahead and wired everything up for extra lights. The eight cubic foot box makes the car's backup camera almost useless. Sure, I can reverse without a camera, but I've come to appreciate having a camera for getting the car perfectly positioned in a parking spot or backing right up to a curb. So I added this wireless backup camera to the truck box. This is the same Lee Ku Lu camera that I bought through Amazon for my cargo trailer. The camera is highly rated and works pretty well. It doesn't work as well as the Volkswagen camera. The, the clarity is good, but it's got a um, more of a fisheye effect to it. Volkswagen's camera is probably a fisheye as well, but it, it does something to correct the aspect on the 
screen so that a straight line looks like a straight line where this camera shows everything curved pretty excessively. I'll add a link in the video description below if you want to check it out. So how does it all work? Eight cubic feet is great for when I need more room than what I can have in the car, but when I don't want a 15 cubic foot rooftop cargo box. I tested the box with a small roller suitcase, an emergency fluid basket, and my camera pack. I added this five gallon gas can just to show that it would fit. It's about the same size as my large laptop bag. Combined, these items weigh around 85 pounds. The truck box itself weighs 40 pounds. The cargo tray weighs 30 pounds, which is 15 pounds lighter than the unit it replaces. The grand total on the hitch for this test was 155 pounds. Ideally, I'd load heavy stuff inside the car and then lightweight, bulky stuff in this carrier. Remember, this solution is for carrying more volume, not extra weight. The cargo carrying capacity of the car is still only about 1,000 pounds. I took the car for a drive on an intentionally bumpy road to see how much it vibrated or wiggled. Here's a railroad crossing. And here is some deliberate passes through a rough parking lot. There was a little bit of wiggling, not much. You can see here that it, it, it will move, but that movement is within the hitch itself or within the, the tray itself. It's not at the hitch. The ride was much more controlled than it would have been without a threaded bolt. There was no rattling, squeaking, or thunking. The truck box is advertised as being weather resistant. Coincidentally, it thunderstormed a few times yesterday. I inspected the interior of the box after one of the torrential downpours and found it completely dry inside. I went for a drive during the next thunderstorm. Even after that next torrential downpour, driving in the rain at highway speeds, the interior was still dry. So I'm happy with the setup and pretty well convinced that my contents will be protected. I don't know when I'll use this arrangement for travel. To be honest, this was sort of a, I'm bored, so let's try this kind of thing. I know I can use this for transporting concealed fuel or used oil. It'll actually hold five of the five gallon fuel containers very easily. It, dimensionally, it'll hold six, but you have to twist the can to get it in. So five easily. And I think six would be overweight anyway. And that would be for the next gas crunch or something like that. I'll talk about that in another video. The extra volume will also come in handy for luggage now that we're traveling with a refrigerator in the trunk. I honestly don't know my exact plan, but I decided to build it now so that I could avoid having to rush when a need arose. I guess I'm a planner and I buy too much stuff. Some pros and cons to this setup that weren't covered in the original Hitch Carrier pros and cons video. When compared to a soft bag, I think the additional security offered by a lockable box is the greatest pro. A soft bag and all of its contents can be stolen by anyone with a knife. In truth, anything can be stolen with enough time, tools, and privacy, but this box will require more effort than a soft bag. I like that the box keeps its shape no matter how full or empty it is. And of course, the hard sides make mounting lights and license plates more convenient than using a soft bag. The only con I can think of is the extra weight. This box weighs 40 pounds, which means I can carry 40 pounds less cargo. Personally, I think the pros outweigh the cons. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer. See the video description for links to the products I use to build all of this. As always, I appreciate you being here and I'll see you next time. Take care.